So we got to go out to King of the Couch. Well, I went, you didn't go. But you'd be pleased to see that it's grown into its own little entity with Io and Tom. Yeah, I was out there from NJIT. Yeah, he's one of the tournament organizers now. Rod brought him in because they feel that they want to improve their fighting game presence. The Pokemon crowd was pretty fierce. Uh, they were talking about their IVs and their IEs and their Firefoxes and all sorts of stuff that old people like me don't know about. Oh my God, they are getting pretty big though, huh? Yeah, they are, they are. The shooting crowd was the shooting crowd. I don't know much about shooters, but you guys may, so check it out. Io, you got your shameless plug in. I have one serious question to ask you. What do you think about fire? We're here with the man of the hour, the mastermind behind it all, Rod Lane. Rod, tell us a little bit about the King of the Couch series and how'd you get into that? Well, King of the Couch is a tournament company that I have. I've been going around for about 10 years. Right. I started out as a gamer, believe it or not, a lot of guys see me, hey, you know, this and that, yeah. but I was a gamer and I was very hardcore in the John Madden field. I played some of the shooters. As I got older and a little bit slower on the reflexes, I decided, look, I can't compete anymore, but I know how to organize, I know how to get people together, so I went on the administrative end. So that's how King of the Couch came about. Um, we've been nationally recognized by EA Sports, Epic Gaming, GameStop, you name it, we've dealt with the big wigs. So many different pros have come out of our events, and I'm just proud to be here representing the gaming community. I'm here with one of the fighting game organizers, Io. Now, I went to the last King of the Couch, and I didn't see you there. How are you involved in this one? Well, basically, I'm from NJIT. We started up a little grassroots community called the NJIT Fighting Game Club, short for NGC. We come together about once every semester, once every four months. We set up a little tournament, mm. I have fun. We invite a couple of people out. One of them was Rod Lane, mm. the uh, owner of King of the Couch mm. in particular, and he liked what we were doing. He liked our initiative. He felt that you know we actually cared about the fighting game community and games in general, right. so he offered us the opportunity. What do you think was the biggest obstacle for organizing something like this? Because a lot of tournament organizers, they go through the knocks, the hard times, trying to find a venue, trying to get, you know, recognized by the community. And I come here and I see hundreds of people that have just embraced you. How did you get to that point of like, what is your advice for those organizers? Hard work, hard work. I started out with four TVs in the American Legion in Dover, New Jersey. I started out with John Madden football only. I advanced it to different games. Uh, today, like the fighting game community, we wanted to re uh, reestablish that with that with our company. They came out incredibly strong. Our shooters were incredibly strong today. Pokemon was strong. It's just about uh, getting the right people in the communities. I can't do everything, and a smart man knows their limitations. I don't know all these games, I don't know all the people, but my people know those people. And they may not be the big names in the community, but they are hardworking guys, intelligent guys, and that's what I do. Hard work. It all starts with hard work and surrounding yourself by positive people. Positive people. We bumped into somebody who's a friend of the 8-Bit Dojo, Beidou, Beidou, haven't seen you in a long time. You're here playing Marvel. What are your keys to victory today? Well, my key victories for, for this one is gonna be all tricks and traps. All tricks and traps of Frank and Trish. We both know Beidou. We know him from the NGIT tournaments. How do you think he'll do today? I mean, I don't want you to put me on stream. How do you like the venue so far? I like it. It's alive, it's out there, it's in the ballroom. I feel like it's prom and Marvel at the same time. Can't beat it. Well, I didn't go to my prom because I got blown up by my girlfriend at the time. So I figured, you know, if I win AE, you and Marvel, we can dance in the middle of the ballroom. What do you think about that? I am definitely down for it. Chris G, coming for you, boy. Tonight, I celebrate my love. We are here with one of the other fighting game organizers, Tom. I'm going to inform you of a horrible, horrible truth. Running a tournament and playing in it is almost impossible. Have you hit that wall yet? We hit it in like the first 10 minutes when it was my first game and then AO's first game. Um, then it got a little hectic, but after that it went smooth. I'm an organizer myself. What do you feel the hardest thing has been for organizing the Jersey scene because you guys don't have access to mass transit like New York and it's a little bit more difficult to get around? It's exactly what you said. The hardest thing to do for me is to start it up. 
Uh, you don't have that many people. Everybody has that, you know, New York does it, Spooky does it, Yipes does it, why do we need to do it mentality. So whenever something happens, they would rather go to New York as opposed to start something here. So when it started, we actually, you know, we were in school up in a room with like 12 people. We didn't do anything. I had to pump in my own money, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, just to get everybody to come in. Tonight, Austin, it's going to be me. It's going to be you. It's going to be in the squared circle. I'm going to show you why I'm the game. This is going to be a battle of baldies versus hair. For my Hey guys, we're here with the gamer formerly known as Loke Battles, Chris G. But he's on finger cramp now. So Chris, <laughs> we're here, he's here, it's king of the couch. How do you feel about this event? Like, was it ran great and stuff like that? Like, what do you feel? This guy, I like the tournament organizers here, like they're mad wild, this jersey. Yeah, yeah. I know, so what do you think? Uh, it's actually really cool. Um, they have nice setups, everything's working out well. Uh, tournament runs smoothly. This isn't like big two or like the break. This isn't a weekly. This isn't a monthly. Do you feel that things like this are good for the finding game community? Well, a lot of the times, like people suggest that you travel to play. If you want to get better, you need to go somewhere and play different people. Let's talk about blow up. You blew me up. I've been working hard for this moment, the Chris versus Chris matchup, and it just went out with the fizzle. Like, did I get any better from those eight bit days where I was just all over the place? <laughs> Yeah, you did get better. Um, your mistake is you let me jab you. But like I told you on Twitter when you kept calling me out, I was gonna blow you up. And I even gave you an extra run back. I gave you one extra game. Still lost. I got, I, I, I got nothing. You gotta make people feel comfortable. Make people feel welcome. We're not intimidating anybody. The parents can come in and talk and hang out with us. My wife runs the registration booth. This is a family atmosphere and a family environment, and we can cater to anybody and everybody. Moral of the story, if you have an idea, go for it. All right, guys, thank you for your time, and we are going back to the tournament. Thank you. I gotta say that my most memorable game from when I was growing up was Street Skate, which not a lot of people that I mention that to know what I'm talking about. Now, the only reason it's memorable to me is because I was out of the country when I was 12, visiting with my parents in Ecuador, and the only game that I was exposed to over there, and the only American game, was Street Skate. And that thing took me through the months of me being there, skating outside, getting injured, wanted to do everything that was in that game even though now when i look back at it it's precursor tony hawk ps1 was like my first actual like at home owned system so seeing pretty much the graphics go from just a 2d platformer type of game to i can now look at the back of a player doing a kick flip or jumping over a car or like I don't know, doing ollies or something up and down the street and I thought that was amazing just because I had never seen that before. And the other thing that not a lot of people knew about it was that you can take that game out of the PS1, put it into a CD player and listen to the soundtrack from the game. Three days of owning this game and I thought I could actually pull some of the tricks off I saw in there. Uh, I went like to the back of my aunt's house over there, there are no paved roads so almost everything is like rocks and gravel. I tried to jump over a four step staircase. Uh, like in some park, landed on a rock, bit the wheel, headed straight forward, and just completely skinned my knees, and it was horrible. <laughs> and I had to be like rushed to my uncle's house, and medicine in Ecuador is not the best, and it's scary. I mean, any parent that like knows that their kid's gonna go into like some weird, dangerous sport is afraid that their medical bills are gonna start piling up and not know what to do. I, I tend to kind of now just stay away from all the things that I saw in my childhood just to keep those good memories going and not like spoil them for myself. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the dojo where we make you better at video games. Now we're going to do this a little bit differently. We're going to start off at different levels and give you the building blocks as you need to get better as gamers. So today we're going to talk about busting the move, otherwise known as just movement. 
Now, there are multiple ways to get around in a video game. You know your way around a controller because we've shown you that. Now, we're using Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 as a test game because that has pretty much all the types of movement that's required for most gaming and fighting games to be played. So we're going to start off with moving around on the screen. You could do that by pressing left or right or up to jump. If you double tap the button for forward, you get a dash forward. If you do it backwards, you get a back dash. Marvel is different because you can press two buttons and dash with that, or you can press forward and two buttons. It's the same thing. All characters have jumps and you perform that by pressing up. Some characters have a double jump where you tap up again in the middle of your jump. All characters can super jump in Marvel, as in some fighting games that are animated. Like 3D fighting games don't really have that, so don't try to super jump in Tekken or Mortal Kombat, because they don't have that. But games like Guilty Gear, uh, Skullgirls, they have the super jump. Now, there are such things as an air dash. You perform this the same way as you would perform a normal dash, but in the air. Sometimes people find it easier to hit forward and two punches to air dash. Some characters are special and they have an eight-way dash. You can tell who has an eight-way dash because they usually have flight or a super jump. Like if you use storm, you can jump and you can dash in any direction you want. Up forward, up back, up uh, down forward, down back. It's all up to you. You can get really creative and you can set up a ton of mix-ups with that. Some characters also have a flight mode, which you usually do by doing an input. Hers is half circle back and special. I hope you enjoy. Start moving around. Next time we'll cover buttons. Peace. Thank you for watching, and my hands are sticky from Icy's. That's what I do all day now. Like, uh, we have Italian Icy's in the back, so I just scoop No, the eat. staff is mad at you about the Icy thing and the axe. Well, you know what? They had the Otter Pops, but now that we have the frozen Icy's, I don't think they're going to get those next year. All right. Katie's pissed. Katie's always angry. She, it's all that rap music I think she listens to. My name is Kwame, and I have the power of Earth. I'm going to go John Edwards on you. I'm going to be like, is there someone in the family audience who starts with a J? You know how many times I tell my manager to go f himself? I mean, didn't you f your roommate before you left? Shut the up. Well, folks say, you poor little fool. I will not be speaking about those perverted things. There's a fly flying around, but we'll take care of that in post-production. You got it. Did he do something that was father-like? Did he? <laughs> well, then you know what? Wikipedia lied to me. What the hell is he talking about? I'm going live. We'll do it live. <laughs> ah, shut up. Perfect. Yeah, bitches. He said goodbye every day. That's right. He said he wants to, he wants closure. I don't have a Twitter. I'm How long did it take you to grow that beard? Overnight. I can't control it, Scott. Telephone. That's a Pax phone ringing that we didn't get to go to. <laughs> Pax is calling. Alpina, and then tickles. <laughs> a deliverance. We're going to have bread in there. <laughs> you out of pretty mouth. Yes. 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 I've got the beard. Yes. I can do this. Can roster. Me up. Por favor. Donde vas, Eric? Donde vas? In order to battle for control of land, towers, and the ultimately goddamn Katie, <laughs> why was you <laughs> my peripherals? What happened? I got used to that. I don't even know what that was good too. I know! <laughs> the peripherals. I just hear. <laughs> I need more cocaine. As much as it's awesome because Bon Jovi came from there and like. I don't know anything else good that came from Jersey. It was a little bit too competitive for some people, but I think a You're lot of people- You're getting old. Shut up. You're getting old, bro.